Hey, welcome to this video. I am Plumber Tom. Let's talk for a minute about how to properly install and support a thermal expansion tank. All right, let's consider for a minute the need to support an expansion tank when it is installed. First of all, let's just consider the fact that it's a metal tank and we're gonna put water in it and it's gonna have some weight. It could be 10 pounds, it could be 20 pounds, depending on the size. There's a significant amount of weight. And the question is, can you suspend all that weight from the supporting pipe, from a pipe that it connects to? I mean, do you wanna put the weight on that? Now, there's some cases where that's a really bad idea. And that's why having a separate support for the expansion tank is really important to have a strap for it. So what does code have to say about this? In the International Plumbing Code 308.10, it talks about expansion tanks and says that they should be supported in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. And then it specifically states that thermal expansion tanks shall not be supported by the piping that connects to such tanks. And let me restate, you can't support an expansion tank by the pipe. Now in the Uniform Plumbing Code, it also mentions installing these according to the manufacturer's installation instructions. So let's have a look at what they have to say about this. Check this out. This diagram comes from the Watts PLT5 expansion tank installation instructions. You can see there are three different locations that they say you can install your expansion tank. The preferred location is here with the tank hanging down and the threaded connection on the top. But they give an optional location Above that we can see you can install it the opposite with the threads coming down or you can also install with the expansion tank coming off horizontally but here specifically it says support tank in an optional horizontal position. So basically you can install an expansion tank any way you want as long as it's connected to the cold side and you probably should support it no matter how it's installed. Let's consider in the past how others have done this many times plumbers will install an expansion tank and support it by the pipes using a galvanized T a galvanized nipple and a galvanized 90 and then they'll thread that expansion tank into that 90 and allow those galvanized fittings and the pipe to hold the weight of the tank now this is not an acceptable way to install an expansion tank because it is supported by the pipe. But it gets even worse when people are installing expansion tanks to copper pipe. Copper pipe does not have the same tinsel strength as steel. And I have seen it near burst when these expansion tanks are full of water. Copper is not made to hold that kind of weight. So this should definitely be avoided. Nowadays, we're installing expansion tanks to a lot of settings where there are PEX pipes. PEX is, again, not a strong pipe. So if we're going to do that, it needs to be supported otherwise. Now, some plumbers use a three-prong drop-eared PEX L supported into structure, put a block in there and really anchor that in, and thread the expansion tank to that. Some people would argue that that's strong enough and it is supported by structure, but technically it is being supported by the pipe to which it is attached. And so this would again not be an acceptable installation. If you want to properly support an expansion tank with no questions asked and no one telling you to rework, you can install one of these hold right expansion tank support kits here are some examples of an expansion tank support kit in use. You can see PEX has been run to the water heaters. This kit mounts to the wall and wraps around, supports the expansion tank. This is the proper, probably the most appropriate way to handle this. So let's get into how do we do this. First, we're going to take the mounting bracket and secure it to the wall. The expansion tank is strapped to the bracket using extremely long basically hose clamps. These are made so that they can handle any variety of expansion tank diameters. They're threaded through the bracket that's mounted to the wall. Now we can prepare the tank itself. We'll put some pipe dope and Teflon tape around the threads of the expansion tank. 
With the tank connected to the pipe, we can now secure it using the clamp. Now this part gets a little bit awkward because the straps are kind of long, but it's manageable. You take the strap and thread it through the clamp side. The bolt for the hose clamp has a little bit of a swivel action, so you can slide that out of the way, thread it through, and then push the bolt back towards the strap. This will engage the threads of the bolt into the strap. And at this point, you can just tighten that in as you would any other hose clamp. In this case, I used a torque wrench to just ratchet that in and get it tight to where it needs to be. You'll do this with the bottom strap as well. This way we'll have two securing straps coming around the expansion tank. We can thread it through the clamp again, push the bolt back towards the strap, and then tighten it down using a torque wrench or a 5 16 nut driver or even a flathead screwdriver. With that, the expansion tank is installed and secured. Don't forget that expansion tank air pressure does have to be adjusted. You'll always want to check the system pressure and inflate the air chamber inside of the expansion tank to match the system pressure Make sure to check out my other video which provides specific information about how an expansion tank works and how you can adjust the air pressure inside of the expansion tank. Do you have a way that you like to install expansion tanks? How do you support them? Make sure to comment below, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.